try to get the uh, finish that I'm looking for. What I'm trying to obtain here is kind of this natural butterscotch look on the Telecaster. Um, it's not really going to be a butterscotch blonde where you kind of have the whitewash underneath. This is really just going to be the butterscotch color with the wood grain showing through. Um, it's kind of a classic Tele look, number one. And number two, um, it's really something that probably more suits my abilities, at least I hope it does. I don't have spray guns, spray booths, nor the experience uh, to try to take on a job like that, a professional paint job. Um, so what I'm going to try to do is take that um, guitar. I've got this trans -trent, trans tent honey amber dye. So I'm going to use that to dye the body and then I'm going to cover that with a true oil when I'm finished with that. I, you know, A lot of people have used this, I've seen them all over the web, all over YouTube, and they look fantastic some of the finishes. We're going to probably put somewhere between 10 and 20 coats on and uh, try to really um, wet sand that and buff it out when we're finished to really get a good high luster to it. So what we're going to do today is we are going to try to figure out how much dye do I need to put on this guitar to get that color. So what I've done is I've taken just a standard paint stick that you get at the local hardware store. I've sanded all the writing off. Um, I think I sanded it 150 to take the lettering off and then kind of with a 220 to kind of smooth it out. Uh, I expect before I start on the actual guitar I'll take it to 400 uh, to get it smoother. And again I know that this is probably pine, it's not going to be, it's not swamp ash so the colors aren't going to be exact. Um, but I'm, that doesn't really matter for what I'm trying to do here. So I've taken the paint stick and uh, just using a square and a pencil put one inch measurements on here. And what I plan to do, I've numbered these one through eight, that's how many spots I have, is I plan to start with one drop, then two drops, then three drops, all the way up to eight drops of this dye. And I'll be putting this dye in half a cup of water, which I have. Uh, this is a two ounce bottle of dye. Uh, I will probably use no more than 40 drops, 50 drops by the time it's all said and done, so I think I have plenty if I need to. Um, if eight drops still doesn't get me there, I'll go ahead and graduate this one up to 16 drops and we'll see where that gets us. And if that doesn't do it, I've got plenty more paint sticks, but I don't think I'll need them. I think this stuff, a little of this stuff will go a long way. So then what I'll do is I, I plan to coat both sides of this and then I'll let it dry overnight and then tomorrow I'm going to hit one side with the true oil because I know the true oil will darken the color. Um, I've seen some videos on YouTube that kind of demonstrate that. So that's really the purpose of what I'm doing. I want to try to get an idea of about how many drops I need in order to get the finished color that closely resembles uh, the Project Tele that we're after here, the butterscotch look. So again, half a cup of water, just a standard paintbrush out of the daughter's art drawer, and we're ready to start. So, so we'll go ahead and start now with a drop in. And let's stir that up and see what we have. I should mention too that when I have this finished, I'll be putting it in a jar that I had to let it dry. And I'll be hanging it, or setting it in here with the lighter side up. And that way if there is any bleed in the color, I don't expect there to be, but if there is, it'll bleed light to dark. If you turn it this way and the dark runs down, um, this whole exercise could be a waste of time. So put it in there like that and we'll let it, uh, let it dry that way. So let's go ahead and start here with the first color. This is one drop. Pretty light. Yeah, it's very light when it's on the wood. And this is just mixed with water. You can mix with alcohol, um, a number of other chemicals that I mentioned. Um, but I just used water because uh, it says it keeps the VOCs down. Uh, it'll allow a little, for a longer working time. That done. So that's one drop. Really didn't make a great difference. Didn't expect it to. So let's go here with drop number two. There we go. And I'm trying down the side. That's not real good. This dye, by the way, is pretty expensive. That was almost thirty dollars with shipping by the time I got it. So uh, again, compared to a professional paint job, it's pennies. 
but for something that, like I said, I'm going to use 40 or 50 drops of, it's quite an expense. For what it is. There's two drops. And it looks like I probably am going to be going into uh, two paint sticks here because this is uh, definitely not uh, coloring up nearly as fast as I thought it might. Okay, so we finished the dyeing process and that didn't go anything like I expected. So this was my first one here that went 1 to 10. I actually wound up adding a 10th spot. I think we started at 8 when I did the original video. And you can see we're barely making any headway at all. You can also see at the end I've still got close to a half a cup left. So it really, it really went a long ways, uh, a lot further than I thought it would. I don't know if you can see the level of dye or not, but it's basically still full. So um, we still have a lot of mileage left on that. So uh, the second stick we did, and I started going um, by twos and then eventually by fours, so I started with 12, I ended up with 40. And you can see we're starting to get a good color there, but we're still not, I don't think, we're, where we want to be. We'll know once we true oil it. So I did a third paint stick, and again I went by fours on this one. So it went 44 to 80, and then I went ahead and did a 90 because it looked like the color was not really getting much darker. So going, as you can see, from 80 to 90, it really didn't get a whole lot darker. And uh, I don't know if we can zoom in on these so you can see where we're at. But that's with 90, and I assume it'll darken when we get some true oil on there, but we'll see. This paint stick seemed to have a lot more grain in it, which is good because that's probably going to be pretty reflective of the ash. Um, but like I say, we'll see that um, tomorrow when we go to do the true oil. So that's it for now, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, it's been a while since we've talked last, um, but I wanted to close the loop on this whole paint stick experiment and fill you in on where we're at. So, uh, I think as I last time I left off, I had finished doing the three sticks of honey amber, and um, following that video, I went ahead and true oiled them. I got a couple coats of true oil on, hit it with some steel wool, put another coat of of the true oil on it. I was really amazed at how well shiny this is. Really nice. A good hard finish. I think I'm really going to uh, like doing this full scale on the guitar. I think it's going to be a great, great project. So, but the more I lived with this color, you know, like I was thinking right in this area, 28, 32, 36 was kind of where I wanted to wind up. But I was really concerned about what I thought was too much orange in the color. And as I got darker, you know, it really is orange. And it's, again, I know these are paint sticks. It's hard to judge. Um, this is pine. I just I was really afraid I was going to get too dark and I was going to wind up with something that looked more like a Paul Reed Smith than a um, than a butterscotch telly. So after chewing on that a while, I decided to go back and order a second bottle of tint. This is just pure amber. It's not the honey amber like we did before. And you can tell the difference when you look at the bottle. This one's almost red, whereas this one doesn't have that same red tint to it. Um, so it's, it does you know, have a lot less red. I did my swatches and being a little bit wiser this time I started with two and went by twos up to 20 and then on this stick I went by fours from 24 up to 60. Then just for giggles I did an 80 and then I did a 100 and you can still see from 80 to 100 it did darken up a little more um, but although this, this pretty much looks the same across the board but you can definitely see it get darker. So I'm thinking, and again, these paint sticks are different. It's really hard to gauge, but I'm thinking this 18 to 20, it's about the color that I'm looking for. So we'll see. I mean, it may wind up being in here. Again, I've done the true oil here. This has just got a couple coats to kind of seal it up and give me a, a difference. I haven't steel wooled this or anything, but it still feels pretty good. I got it to the point where the initial soak up was done, and it's starting to build a shot luster now. So I've got a before and after. So we're going to start with the uh, regular amber, probably start with a 12, 
and we'll start putting one coat, two coats. We'll see how it looks and we'll try to take it up into an area that I'm happy with. And once I get a color I think is going to work, then we'll, uh, we'll make some decisions about clearing it up with the true oil and going from there. So that's where we're at.